know that it's possible for a CFD or spread betting provider to make profits or losses by giving at least a portion of the customer's book unhedged, but what actually happens in real life? Do they hedge or don't they? Spread betting and CFD work firms make money in two different ways. They make money through the spread and they make money through the exposure that they take on. And so, yes, you're right that if there was one client trading against one brokerage firm, there would be that relationship where the winning client and the, the broker loses. But that, that's not the reality of it. At any one time, there may be 8,000 people trading on a variety of different markets. So actually, you're not really trading against the broker. You're, you're one big mass of people that are all trading. And, and at any one time, there might be people who are long of the market. There might equally be people who are short of the market. And really, the, 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 the firm is just in the middle of it. So, so yes, you're right that uh, if a client wins, it might come from the brokerage, but the broker doesn't look at just one client. It looks to get exposure across all 8,000, 10,000, 20,000 clients it may have. Do spread betting and providers work out their prices and how transparent is the process? Spread betting firms have to produce a price that reflects the market. But I think what's important to note is we are not taking a guess on where we think the market is going. And in fact, if the price that we offered to a client was dramatically different than the market itself, well actually there'd be an arbitrage opportunity. The client could buy the real asset and then bet against it with ourselves and make risk-free money. So although we have the ability to make our own prices, it's, it'd be ludicrous if we didn't 100% map the actual underlying asset. Based on that, how often is there dealer intervention? There is very rarely dealer intervention, because why would there be? Um, I think it's important to know, and maybe there's this information that we talked about, the client is more informed than has ever been, so there's no reason why the broker would know more than the client. So there's no reason for a, the broker to actually make a different price than what the client would expect it to be. Do you think there ever the prices are skewed in line with market trends, i.e. adding to offer the price when clients are going long and lowering the bid when they're going short? There are two different types of markets that spread betting firms offer. One that actually has an underlying market that we hedge in, and another that doesn't have an underlying market that we hedge in. So for example, uh, if you do maybe a grey market, a grey market is one that uh, 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 offers a price in an unlisted product. Maybe, for example, before Facebook uh, launched, you could trade in the grey market of Facebook. Now, the firm has no way of hedging their risk on a market like that. And so the only way they can dictate whether they get more buyers or more sellers is actually to move their price. However, if actually the market is an underlying market that they can hedge on, they don't need to really reflect whether they got more buyers or more sellers. They just hedge themselves. So it, it, it's very rare for a, a listed commodity to have any kind of skewing in it. It's more likely for a product that doesn't actually exist on the open market. Are stops triggered on the bid offer prices of spread betting companies' prices or on the bid offer prices of the underlying market? The spread betting bid offer prices are 100% mapped to the underlying market. So although they might be at different levels because of the spread that the spread betting firm charges, they're completely connected. So, uh, you know, to my mind, they're one and the same. <laughs>